Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Okey, kita berjumpa sekali lagi sesi petang hari kedua ya. How is everybody? Fine. Good. Good. Okay, Adiba, what did you have for lunch? Uh, nasi putih with ayam masak lemak. Nasi putih with ayam masak lemak. Oh, sounds nice. Okay, what about you, Hidayah? What did you have for lunch? Nasi putih dengan ikan goreng. Nasi putih ikan goreng. Shazwan? Beriari dengan dinding. Brani dengan dinding? Huh. Oh, okay. Emilia? I had a cup of coffee. <laughs> a cup of coffee? Are you yeah. on that? Yes. <laughs> you are on diet. What, what, what is, what is this, uh, coffee diet all about? I've never heard of coffee diet. Oh, I just, I just, I just drank like, I, I drink coffee, like black coffee too. I mean, it helps to suppress hunger. So I don't feel hungry if I drink coffee. Serious? Coffee yeah. suppress hunger? Yes, black coffee. I didn't know that. Free. <laughs> okay, Amir, what about you? What about you, Amir? Nasi goreng dengan dark chocolate. Huh? I dark chocolate. Nasi goreng, I dark chocolate. I dark chocolate? Wow. Ini macam... <laughs> Jangan ni minum air dark chocolate ni. Tiba-tiba hmm. rasa mengidam. Tiba rasa mengidam. What about you, Syahida? Ni, uh, nasi lemak and only plain water. Nasi lemak and plain water? Nasi lemak? Okay. Yes. Okay. Was that uh, leftover from breakfast? Yes, it's from breakfast. Uh, on breakfast. Okay. Nazifah, kau makan apa? I was sleeping. Huh? <laughs> uh, that's the best diet. Sleep during lunch time. Then you don't have to eat because you don't feel hungry. <laughs> Good luck to you, uh, Nazifah. Asri, kau makan apa, Asri? Alhamdulillah. Saya, saya tak makan. Saya ada, ada kerja sikit nak kena buat. Makan. Tak makan diet. Diet? Kau buat yes. buat kuki ke tadi? Ha? Kau buat kuki ke? Buat kek ke? Oh tak. Saya bungkus batch baby. <laughs> Sorry? Bungkus apa? Bungkus baju baby. Bungkus baju baby? Oh you uh -uh. ada bisnes jual baju baby eh? Ha uh ha. -uh, kakak saya. Oh hebat betul. What about you, Raziman? What about you, Raziman? I'm having chicken sandwich with salad and low fat milk. Okay, bukan bukan I'm having. Kau dah makan dah. I'm having. I'm having. Kau macam I am eating. I had. I had. Uh, okay. Uh, I had past tense. Yeah, I had. Okay. Okay, okay, good to hear that all of you had great lunches, and uh, we are back. Okay, until five. Okay, um, ada kawan kita tertendang keluar tadi. Nama dia Aizuddin. Is he is he inside? Is he in? Mana Aizuddin? Ada tak Aizuddin? Huh. Tak ada. No Aizuddin? Tak ada. Tak ada? Hmm. Okay. Maybe later he'll come back. Yeah? Okay. So... Uh, he can join back the group. He's back. He cannot He cannot enter. He cannot enter. Ha, itulah sebabnya. Sebab <laughs> saya tertenang dia keluar. He cannot enter. So I will, I will tell my... my Apa tu? My colleague. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Eh?
ओके ओके सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट सो लेट्स बूस्ट आवर एनर्जी naikkan semangat suntik semangat kita okey seperti biasa everybody switch on your microphones switch on your microphones okey when i count 1 2 3 i want everybody to shout nak mula nak okay. mula nak mula okey semangat okey get ready 1 Two, three. Nak mula. This is a this is a great lesson for all of us, including myself. A reminder to myself and a lesson for everybody. Okay, so it is very important that you do everything in your life with a lot of determination. Yeah. It's important for you to do everything in your life with great determination. Uh, determination ni kesungguhan ya dengan kesungguhan yang tinggi, okay? Because without great determination, you wouldn't achieve anything of high value. Memang tak mungkin ya. Hanya mungkin tercapai kalau kita ada kesungguhan dalam segala apa yang kita lakukan. How to do? How to boost your performance? Yeah. Okay? How to boost your determination? Yeah. Uh, Kadang-kadang kita di tempat kerja kita dah rutin dah kena buat kerja yang sama berulang-ulang kali. Nanti dah mula kerja nanti kalau buat account berulang-ulang kali buat account. Macam dulu siapa pernah kerja di Pizza Hut hari-hari dia kena teba pizza. Okay, uh, siapa kerja KFC, hari-hari kena goreng ayam KFC. Macam itulah. Bawa grab, hari-hari kena bawa grab. Okay, uh, yang mana kena kerja buat laporan, every day you have to do the report. So, after three times, after five times, after four weeks, after seven weeks, you will get bored. Definitely you will get bored. Okay, and there's nothing we can do about it because, yeah, Job is about routine. Ha, routine. Kerja memanglah routine. Tak ada kerja yang tak ada routine kan? Ya, Tak ada kerja hari ini pergi London, esok pergi Paris, kemudiannya pergi ke Labuan, tak ada. Ya, ha, So, everything is routine. Jalan kita pergi kerja pun routine. Jalan kita balik kerja pun routine. Nanti tengoklah. Pergi makan dekat kantin pun routine juga. Makan benda yang sama je 30 tahun. Okay? So, in order for us not to get bored so, tidak bosan ya yeah, kita perlu menyuntik semangat kita jangan tunggu orang nak suntik semangat kita kita sendiri kena mulakan dengan menyuntik semangat kita sendiri okey dan bagaimana caranya untuk menyuntik semangat sendiri supaya kita tidak bosan dan kita boleh meneruskan kesungguhan kita mudah aja ya yeah. be happy be crazy Yeah, at work and everywhere else. Macam mana nak be crazy, be happy? Macam tadilah. Masuk-masuk ke tempat kerja pagi, pagi pukul 8 pagi. Oh, Assalamualaikum. <laughs> ah, walaupun tak ada orang. Because you are the first to arrive. It doesn't matter. Okay, balik. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Okay, lepas tu bila masuk tu, ada Syazwan ke apa? High five Syazwan. Ah, macam tu. Dia pun ada tepuk belakang dia. Okay, kan? Ha, jadi, maksudnya kita create the happiness. We can create the happy environment at our workplace, at our office. We can create the happy environment in the grab car that we drive. Ha, tanyalah Nazifah, tak Nazifah? Hari-hari bawa grab, bosan tak? Uh, tak. Ha, kenapa kau tak bosan? Jumpa ramai orang. Jumpa ramai orang. Jadi... You, so, you you make yourself interested in the people that you drive, betul tak? Ah, uh, uh, but, but sometimes get customer like they no talk at all, so uh, so yeah, <laughs> feel awkward. Ya lah, apa lah kan? But at least at least the majority of the passengers talk to you kan? Ah, uh, so boleh lah. 
Yeah. Ah. So so we 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 create our own happiness. Yeah. We create our own happiness. Orang buat pizza sambil buat pizza tu dia boleh nyanyi so seorang ke pun boleh juga. Dah habis 10 pizza dia boleh high five ke. And anything ya. Yeah? Anything to liven up the spirit, to lift the spirit of your workplace. Bila kat rumah pun sama juga. Bila kat rumah juga, kita juga kena menyuntik keseronokan supaya kita tidak bosan. Kena tu kita akan bosan, 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 bosan. Kita akan bosan dengan rumah kita. Kita akan bosan dengan keluarga kita. Kita akan bosan dengan mami, daddy kita. Kita akan bosan dengan adik kita. Semuanya bosan kan. Ya, ha, Jadi macam mana? Buat gila-gila. Buat gila-gila. So, cara saya pula supaya tidak bosan semasa saya mengajar ada dengan cara menjerit-jerit begitu. Ha, itu cara saya. Saya suka jerit-jerit. Kan? Ha, buat gila-gila. Itu gila-gila cara saya. Okay? Ha, jadi, bila saya buat macam tu, saya rasa bersemangat dan saya rasa tidak bosan. Seronok saya. Saya suka. Okay? Lepas tu, bila saya jerit-jerit, saya buat happy-happy macam tu. Kan? Saya tengok reaksi anda semua pun boleh terima. Anda pun terus happy juga. Ha, Laki lah saya happy. Kan? Ha, bila saya teruja. Saya mula dengan dengan memaksa diri saya untuk rasa teruja. Tetapi apabila saya teruja, saya tengok muka Amir, muka Adiba, muka Asri pun senyum dan teruja. Maka bertambah-tambahlah teruja saya. Bila saya bertambah teruja, anda juga turut teruja. Ha, jadi kita mulakan kitaran yang positif. Cuba kat pejabat. Cuba satu hari awak masuk pejabat, awak masa muka. Kawan awak tengok muka awak macam cuka, dia pun masa muka. Infectious ya. Yeah? Habis apa berlaku? Satu pejabat pun masa muka. Customer datang, kena tengking. Customer telefon, kena tengking juga. Why? Bad day for everybody in the office. How come everybody had a bad day? Because it started with you coming into the office with a very long and sour face. So don't do that. Okay, smile. Huh? And everything will smile. The whole world will smile with you if you smile. Believe me. Okay? Jadi, kita teruskan. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, when we deliver our speeches and presentations, what is our main objective and motive? Apakah motif kita membuat pembentangan dan juga menyampaikan ucapan? Apa motif kita sebenarnya? What is our motive? Memberi kefahaman. Memberi kefahaman? Hmm. Lagi? Nak sampaikan sesuatu maklumat. Sampaikan maklumat? Tidak. Lebih daripada itu. Lebih daripada menyampaikan maklumat. Okay? Menyampaikan maklumat, cikgu kat sekolah. Disampaikan maklumat. Diajar kita formula. Kita pakai tak? Tak pakai. Pakai masa nah, exam. Kan? Yelah, pakai masa exam. Lepas tu dah. Nah, dah tak pakai lah kan? Tak ada dah. Okay? Ha, yelah, tak, tak pakai lah. Ya, ha, itu dan banyak lagi ilmu lain yang cikgu kita ajar kita sekadar untuk mengajar kita, sekadar untuk memberitahu ada formula ini, ada formula itu tapi kemudiannya kita tak menggunakannya. Dan sekarang di alam kerja, kerjaya, anda memang tahulah 99% daripada apa yang awak yang awak apa tu yang awak belajar sebenarnya awak tak gunakan ya di di tempat kerja anda right so how do we do this so how do we do we overcome this problem okey ha, jadi uh, kita sebenarnya kita kena faham apabila kita menyampaikan ucapan dan membuat pembentangan kita ada tujuan tujuan kita lebih daripada itu sebenarnya kita mahu mempengaruhi audience kita untuk mengambil sesuatu tindakan think of it fikir betul Fikir balik. Betul tak saya cakap, saya cakap ni? Sebenarnya, tujuan kita nak memujuk pendengar mengambil sesuatu tindakan. That's what we, that's what, that's why we speak to them. Contohnya, kenapa kita, contohnya kalau kalau Amir, kenapa Amir bercakap dengan Syazwan, bercerita tentang movie yang Amir baru tonton? Ha, katakan Amir semalam tengok satu cerita. Katakan tengok cerita apa Justice League ke apa ke okay, Lepas tu Pergi jumpa Syazwan pagi tu Oh sungguh-sungguh cerita Eh Syazwan Semalam aku tengok ada cerita tu lah Cerita Justice League lah Ada cerita Justice League tu lah Aquaman ada Wonder Woman ada Batman ada Superman ada 
Uh, mereka lawan lah ni. Maaf, the dark seed dia mereka lawan. Ha. Nah, ini, ini, itu lah apa semua kan. Sebenarnya apa tujuan kau? Dah habis cerita. Sekian sadaqallah alazim. Apa apa tujuan kau ambil kau cerita dekat jazwan tentang movie yang awak tonton semalam? Apa sebenarnya? Nak ajak tengok sama. Saja nak kongsi happiness. <laughs> tak, saja nak out, hey, kongsi happiness tak? Sebabnya nak mempengaruhi dan memujuk Syazwan untuk pergilah tengok cerita tu. Itu sebenarnya. Kau tak buat apa cerita. Kan? Ataupun, eh, semalam aku tengok cerita Justice League. Ya Allah, teruk betul. Kau jangan tengok tak apa-apa cerita dia. Ha, itu betul juga cerita juga kan? Itu nak mempengaruhi apa pula? Jangan tengok. Jangan tengok. Ha, masih juga nak mempengaruhi tindakan. Tindakan jangan tengok kan? Ya. Yeah. Ha, jadi ada tujuan kita menyampaikan. Kalau kita buat pembentangan tentang produk. Okey. Jika kita membuat satu pembentangan tentang produk, katakan produk kita uh, produk kecantikan dan sebagainya, lepas tu kita cakap pasal produk kita apa semua, apa tujuan kita? Apa tujuan kita bercerita tentang nak suruh manfaat. orang beli? Ah. Kita nak puju orang beli sebenarnya. Kita nak puju orang beli. Ahli politik musim pilihan raya. Ke sini, ke sana. Ceruk sini, ceruk sana. Utara, selatan, timur, barat. Dapat bercakap depan orang. Apa apa motif diorang? Diorang nak apa? Mereka dibayar untuk bercakap. Nak meraih undi. Nak, nak pujuk. Nak pujuk audiens untuk mengundi mereka dan juga parti mereka. Itu sebenarnya. ya. Ha, jadi sebenarnya tak habis. Cikgu tadi, dia sebenarnya sepatutnya bukan ber, bukan setakat mengajar formula. Kemudian dia perlu memujuk kita untuk menggunakan formula itu. Ha, dia pujuk kita. Ha, contohnya kalau dia ajar kita teori Pythagoras. Okay? Ajar kita teori Pythagoras, lepas tu dia pujuk kita. Eh, sebenarnya teori Pythagoras ni awak boleh gunakan jika awak nak mengukur bangunan ataupun bukit tau. Ha, tengok bangunan tu depan kita tu. Ha, 12 tingkat. Awak tahu tinggi dia berapa? Ha, jom saya tunjuk. Bagaimana kita nak ukur? Ha, boleh? Ya, kan? Ya boleh. Boleh ukur. Ha, kan? Jadi jadi kita boleh gunakan. Kita boleh gunakan. Jadi bila dia tunjuk macam mana nak gunakan habis semua bangunan kat Kuala Lumpur ni kita akan ukur. Tapi kenapa kita tak ukur bangunan-bangunan guna teori Pythagoras? Sebab cikgu tak pucuk kita, tak menunjukkan kita bagaimana kita boleh mengukur bangunan, tinggi bangunan guna teori Pythagoras. Okay. Ha. Tinggi gunung Everest tu sebenarnya 6 point berapa kilometer. Itu pun diukur guna guna teori Pythagoras saja. Ha. Mana ada orang pergi ukur daripada kaki bukit sampai ke atas tu. Ya, yeah. ha, dia orang guna kira Pythagoras juga, ya. Yeah. Ha, jadi semua benda boleh diukur. Jadi kena tunjuk. Ngajar kita account. Ngajar si setakat account jelah. Jadi kita 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 tak gunakan apa kata dia pujuk. Gunalah account ni nak simpan duit masuk duit keluar awak. Ha. Ha, yang debit tu duit masuk, yang kredit duit keluar. Ha, jadi kita pun guna. Kalau kita guna sampai sekarang pun kita guna. Tapi masalahnya account accountant sendiri pun tidak menggunakan sistem simpan kira untuk kira duit masuk duit keluar dia. Ya. Ha, jadi kita sebenarnya motif kita lebih daripada menyampaikan nak memberitahu sebenarnya kita nak memujuk memujuk audience untuk mengambil sesuatu tindakan. So therefore the ultimate objective of all presentations is to persuade the audience to take a specific action. And you must tell them what the specific action is and the uh, and the way you inform the audience what the specific action is is when you tell them in the last sentence. Ayat terakhir itulah yang anda memberitahu audience apakah yang mereka perlu lakukan. Cerita tentang rokok Rokok ni memudaratkan dan sebagainya tadi. Saya dah lupa siapa cerita. Akhirnya apa? Jangan risau rokok. 
Itu mesejnya kan. Jangan kita mula dan jangan janganlah kita mula untuk memulakan tabiat menghisap rokok. <coughs> Okey. Ya, jadi kalau kita cerita tentang langkah-langkah untuk mengatasi uh, tekanan. So apa apa mesej dia? Ah itu jelah saya saja nak bagi tahu je. Tak, bukan saja bagi tahu. Dah bagi tahu, suruhlah guna, gunakanlah langkah-langkah yang saya terangkan tadi untuk Mengatasi tekanan dalam diri anda. Kan? Tadi siapa ke cerita tadi pasal dia nak balik. Kalau ada kalau kalau ada time machine, dia nak travel back to the time when it was in form 5. Who was that? Was it Amir? Ingat siapa lah tadi. Okay, someone spoke about that. Okay, ah, masa form 5. Ya, jadi sekadar bercerita ke tentang dia nak balik ke form 5. Dia sebenarnya nak nak gunakan time machine, nak balik ke form 5 sebab dia ada buat kesilapan dan dia nak tukar kesilapan itu. Tetapi malangnya kesilapan itu tidak boleh ditukar lagi kerana kita sebenarnya tidak ada time machine. There's no time machine to change what you have done in the past. Jadi apa mesejnya? So ladies and gentlemen, always think before you take an action because once the action has been taken you cannot change it anymore because in reality there is no time machine jadi maksudnya dia mengajak kita berhati-hati sebelum kita mengambil apa-apa tindakan right uh, so always remember that the second thing is i want to share with you now yeah if The audience is not paying attention to the presenter. It is always the presenter's fault. Yeah. Kalau audience tak memberi tumpuan, kalau audience tidur, maka kesilapannya terletak atas bahu presenter. Presenter jangan marah audience. Yeah, jangan marah audience. Bukan salah audience mereka tidur dan tidak memberi tumpuan. Yang mereka tidur dan tidak memberi tumpuan tu adalah Salah presenter kerana presenter tidak sungguh-sungguh kerana presenter tidak menunjukkan keceriaan dan bersemangat semasa membuat pembentangan. Mereka, mereka bosan. Bila mereka bosan, mereka nak keluar tapi tak boleh keluar. Terpaksa juga duduk ke dalam kelas, dalam bilik, dalam bilik syarat dan sebagainya. Maka mereka pun mula untuk tidur. Jadi salah siapa? Salah presenter. Jangan salahkan audience. Jangan jadi macam cikgu dan juga lecturer. Cikgu dan lecturer, kalau kalau student tidur, dia akan marah student. Okay? Kalau kita ambil sikap dan kita contohi sikap cikgu kita dan juga lecturer kita yang memarahi student bila tidur, maka contoh itu tidak baik. Kerana kalau kita marah audience, maksudnya Bukan salah kita. Kalau bukan salah kita, kita tak perlu perbaiki cara kita menyampaikan. You don't have to change the way you deliver your presentation and your speech. Because it is not your fault. But if you assume that it is your fault, then you will begin to look for answers. You will begin to analyze and test and see which is a better way to deliver your speeches and your presentations so that the audience will pay more attention to you and not fall asleep. Okay? Ha, jadi jawapannya, ya Syazwan, bukannya student yang salah, bukan dua-duanya salah, presenter tu yang salah. Barulah presenter tu akan mengambil tindakan untuk memperbaiki dirinya. Kalau dia rasa bukan salah dia, dia hanya akan marah, marah, marah. Dia akan memarahi audience supaya jangan tidur. Itu je. That's not the way. Okay, that's a negative way of keeping your audience awake. Kau tidur, siap. Ha, daripada kita kata kau tidur, siap. Baiklah kita menukar cara pembentangan kita supaya lebih menarik dan audience kita tidak tidur. Okay? Alright. Okay, so in the next round, yeah, in the next round, I would like you... Okay, I would like you to tell a story. Bercerita. Okay, I would like you to tell a story. 
storytelling is a great method to deliver a message and to persuade the audience to take action. Kita tengoklah cerita-cerita 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 lama kan. Orang lama suka menyampaikan sesuatu nasihat dan sebagainya dan memujuk kita dengan cara bercerita. Okey dengan cara bercerita. Contohnya cerita Piramli Madu 3. Ya. Yeah. Ha. apa apa sebenarnya nasihat apa yang Piramli cuba nak pujuk sebenarnya? Cerita Madu 3. Apa yang Piramli nak pujuk sebenarnya? What is he trying to persuade us to do? Ha Amir, apa dia Amir? Ha, Madu 3. Kau tak tengok ke cerita Madu 3? Tengok. Ah, ada mesej. Dia, dia setiap kali ada masalah dengan bini lama dia, dia cari bini baru. Itu jalan cerita dia lah. Tapi akhir sekali apa? Akhir sekali dia dia kena kejar dengan bini-bini dia, keluar pintu, masuk pintu, kena kejar keluar rumah. Lepas tu ada apik tu nak bunuh diri, terjun masuk dalam kereta dia dengan bawa bendera. Last kali berdamai kan? Last kali berdamai. Okay. Tapi, apa cerita ni sebenarnya? Sakit kepala. Masalah. Masalah kalau kita banyak isteri. Betul tak? Kan? Masalah jika banyak isteri. Bila banyak isteri, perlu pandai berbohong. Itu lagu dia kan? Bila banyak isteri, kena pandai ber... banyak berbohong. Okay. Ha, jadi, bohong pun kena ingat. Kejap dengan isteri yang mana yang yang dia tampal mata belah kiri, isteri mana pula dia tampal belah, mata belah kanan, ha, kena ingat semua dalam cerita dia. Okay? Ha, jadi nasihat dia apa? Janganlah beristeri dua atau tiga kerana akan mendatangkan masalah. Itulah cerita dia. Okay? Bukan cerita dia suruh kita kahwin dua tiga. Kalau kahwin dua tiga, tak adalah dia cerita ada masalah. Happy je kan. Tapi ada masalah. Ha, kan lari sini, lari sana, keluar pintu, masuk pintu dan sebagainya. Kena kejar dan sebagainya. Maksudnya janganlah cari masalah. Ya, yeah? Okay, don't marry more than one wife. So that's the message. Ha, jadi, jadi saluran bercerita, kaedah bercerita, ada satu kaedah yang berkesan untuk kita menyampaikan sesuatu. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to tell a story. Okay? You can you can look into the net and get one of the stories if you don't have your own story. Okay? It is better for you to tell your own story from your own experience. Okay? So by doing that, you are able to be more persuasive with your audience. Lagi sonok kita dengar cerita peribadi daripada cerita zaman Pak Kaduk lah apa semua kan. Ha, we are more interested in you as a person. Tapi kalau tak ada cerita apa-apa, tak boleh fikir apa-apa cerita pasal diri sendiri, nak kita jadikan contoh dan sebagainya, maka you can go to the internet and get a short story for you to tell. Alright, okay. So this story... I would like you to deliver in English. Cuba lah. Okay. Jangan cari jangan cari cerita lepas tu cari nasihatnya. Fikir dulu nasihat apa yang anda nak sampaikan kemudian cari ceritanya yang sesuai. Ya. Yeah. Orang selalu ada destinasi baru cari kenderaan nak ke destinasi. Nak pergi Labuan. Hmm, macam mana nak pergi Labuan? Nak naik kereta api ke? Nak naik kapal terbang ke? Nak naik kapal ke? Nak naik feri ke? Ha. Kan? Itu cara betul. Cari destinasi, tetapkan destinasi, kemudian cari kenderaannya. Kenderaan tu ceritanya. Destinasi tu nasihatnya. Jarang orang nak naik nak naik juga kereta api. Tapi nak pergi mana tak tahu pergi mana. Tengoklah sampai ke mana. Hmm, tak ada. Ya. Yeah. 
Orang tak pilih kenderaan dahulu sebelum destinasi. Orang pilih destinasi dulu sebelum kenderaan. Jadi anda nak menyampaikan sesuatu ucapan dan juga pembentangan. You also need to do the same thing. Think of the objective first. And then decide which story will be suitable to help you to persuade the audience to take the action that you want them to take. Fikir. Saya bagi peluang untuk anda berfikir. Okay guys, siapa yang boleh get in touch dengan Aizuddin, tolong bagi tahu Aizuddin dia boleh masuk sekarang. It means saya dah betulkan sistem. Siapa ke? Nazifa ke siapa tadi? You were in touch, you were in, you were in communication with. Okay, sir. Uh, tell him he can come in now, ya. Yeah? Okay. Okay, Atira. Dah fikir dah kita apa yang kita sampaikan. Have you decided? What is the story that you want to share? Uh, huh? Sudah ke belum? Tengah. Tengah fikir. Okay, fikir. Hmm. Apa nasihat yang kita nak sampaikan? Apa cerita yang sesuai yang boleh kita gunakan? Untuk menyampaikan nasihat kita tu. Kalau kita nak menasihatkan supaya kita mula menabung semasa kita masih muda. Maka kita boleh gunakan cerita uh, The Grasshopper daripada Aesop. Ya? Kita juga boleh gunakan cerita hikayat. Kita boleh gunakan cerita sirah Nabi. Apa sajalah cerita yang kita nak sampaikan. Okay. Try to deliver this round in English. The next round, you will deliver in VM.
Yang terbaik guna cerita peribadi. That's the best. Use a personal story. Okey. Siapa nak mula? Hentam saja. Enjoy enjoy. Galak galak. Happy happy. Tell a story. Bagi saya rasa. Ha, okey. Asri nak mula ya. Okey, bagus tu. Okey, minta semua tepuk tangan kepada Asri. Tepuk. Okey, Asri. Over to you. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very good afternoon. Okay, I'm not so excited to tell you this. This is because it's about the insecurities. Okay. Uh, yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, tak? Dengar, dengar, dengar. <laughs> kalau, kalau you nak cerita pasal insecurity, apa semua, then oh, betul, kita tak pakai lah uh, excited. Uh, Tapi kata I have a serious matter to share. Oh, alright. 
I have a serious matter to share. Okay, macam tu eh. Mula balik. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Very good afternoon to all. Good. Okay, I have a serious matter to to tell you. It's about the insecurities. Okay. Uh, my insecurities is about not able to take a risk. Okay, I feel like the whole world is going to deny my existence. This is because uh, most of the time people are going to encourage me that you are doing well, that you are going to succeed in this, you are going to succeed in that. But at some point, I feel like the expectation they give to me is more like a burden to myself. And I feel like I'm going to let them down and I feel very uncomfortable uh, of doing that. So I'm going to that too. Okay. Okay, most of the time I feel like uh, if I died before, I will have I wouldn't have to make this decision. Uh, even, even when I'm going to have an examination like UPSR, PMR, SPM, I feel like uh, it's better for me to die before so I don't have to take this examination. Uh, it, it's like uh, serious like that. And then, but uh, I try my best to fulfill every task given. And when everything is uh, finished, I will think. Uh, I would think back and talk to myself uh, how silly you are to, to myself, how silly you are for having uh, so much insecurities and not trusting you and not trusting yourself. Uh, be confident and put your trust more on me, yourself. I, I'm talking to myself like that. Uh, so uh, my point is you have to be confident and trust yourself more in whatever decision you are going to make. Don't let anyone judge you. Don't let anyone uh, 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 tell you to what uh, do this, to, to do that. Uh, feel, uh, you need to be more confident uh, on yourself. Uh, that's all. Okay, bagus, Aswe. Tepuk. Okay, so thank you, Aswe, for sharing. So here you have shared with us uh, your personal uh, your personal battle with your insecurities. Okay, so you you have told yourself to overcome that and just believe in yourself. Betul lah. Okay, so that's 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 what you did, right? But what is more important is the story itself, the story. Now. If you had told, perhaps I, I'm I'm just I'm just making up the story, filling up the gaps. Okay, so you can customize the story to meet the your actual reality, your actual example. Yeah, okay. So if I were Asri, I will continue. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share with you that uh, in the past I have a lot of insecurities. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I could do anything and succeed in anything. This is because people have high hopes on me and I've always failed them. And I always thought that, you know, uh, rather that I, I, I wish that I, would, I, I could die because if I am dead, then I don't have to make all these decisions. So all this weight of responsibility is on me and I, I couldn't handle this because I think I am not good enough to handle all this and I cannot succeed. But people expect me to succeed. So that is very bad. So very stressful to me. So what I did was, uh, I did small things. Yeah, I did small things. I baked a cake. <laughs> I succeeded. I, I baked cookies. I gave to my friends. They are happy. They said, you know, they like my cookies. I, I cooked. I I. I took up a hobby. Uh, I I started running, and uh, earlier I couldn't run one kilometer. Now I can run twenty kilometers. So these incidents, in these examples that I have undergone, made me realize that I shouldn't worry about my insecurities because whatever insecurities that I have, I can overcome that. So I would like to send everyone a message. All of us will have our own insecurities. Yeah, all of us will have to face our own demons within us, 
our insecurities are our personal demons. But I would like to assure you yeah, that all of us have the capability to overcome those insecurities like what I did. I have overcome my insecurities by doing small things and succeeding at smaller things. And my success at smaller things has given me confidence to take on bigger things in my life. So my message to you, start small, do small things, enjoy the success of doing small things, build your confidence from there. And if you believe you can do small things, then believe that you can also do bigger things. Thank you. Good. Jadi cerita kau tu tadi asli, cerita how you overcome that one, you tak ada cerita, tiba-tiba je dah believe in myself. Betul uh, tak? Okay. Uh, uh. What, what, what did you do to believe in yourself? Did you start running, <laughs> you start dieting, mesti ada Tidur. benda, kita bila kita buat satu benda, kita sukses, wah, I'm successful, boleh buat benda sikit, nak buat lagi benda lagi besar, ha, macam tu lah kan. Tapi apa apa benda yang trigger you? Mesti ada benda yang you buat dalam dalam hidup you yang trigger uh, dalam fikiran you. Kalau saya boleh buat benda kecil ni, benda besar pun saya boleh buat. Dulu tak yakin benda kecil pun boleh buat. Tapi cuba juga. Eh, boleh lah. Apa benda dia? What is it? Ha. Oh, nak kena jawab ke? Ah, janganlah benda benda tu benda tu yang yang will make your story complete tak cukup tak cukup tak cukup tak cukup, tak cukup intipati dia ah tak cukup tak cukup rasa jadi tak kena letak kena letaklah secukup rasa saya rasa saya macam just uh, follow the flow je and then benda tu go smooth saja tapi dia just insecure lebih-lebih je padahal benda tu macam biasa je sebenarnya ah and then, then you can check lah benda tu i I, I was insecure, tak tak yakin. Tapi I buat I buat satu benda jadi. Buat benda ni jadi. I buat cookies jadi. I buat cheesecake jadi. I masak jadi. I jaga adik jadi. I li, lipat kain jadi. Jadi so far dia tak ni, mati lagi lah. Ah, ha, jadi 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 kalau semua benda boleh jadi, maksudnya oh tak ada macam insecure gila tu. Ah. Then I believe I can do everything. Anything. Ada cuma you you mungkin mungkin you tak 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 realize it lah kan? Ah, uh, because to overcome insecurities ni kita kena ada macam naik tangga, macam naik tangga eh. Buat benda kecil jadi, buat lagi besar jadi, buat lagi besar jadi. Panjat bukit kecil jadi, panjat bukit besar lagi, panjat besar lagi. Habis habis panjat gunung Everest. Dia tak ada panjat gunung Everest terus. Uh, that's how people train themselves to overcome their insecurity in general. Okay, anyway, anyway, good sharing. Uh, thank you for sharing with us about your insecurities. If I look at you, Asri, yeah. I see a very confident person. If you didn't tell me that you have all these insecurities, I wouldn't believe it. Can. <laughs> Ha. Ha, 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 dia eh, tak tahu pun kata, yes, even you pesa semua pun setiap kali nak ambil exam-exam macam tu Kalau tak dah, baiklah aku mati tak payah ambil exam ni yeah. <laughs> Tapi berjaya, tapi berjaya, so that means insecurity, in, your insecurity ni sebenarnya tak ada asas It's yeah. baseless, uh. baseless insecurity Itu macam silly sangat Padahal I'm doing well, so exam-exam, uh, tapi dia insecure gila-gila Okay, get over it ya yeah? Okay, bagus. Tepuk, bagi, bagi tepukkan kepada Asri. Clap. Okay, siapa lagi nak cerita? 
Siapa lagi nak kongsi? Come on. Cerita lah. Amy nak cerita ke Amy? Amy. Siapa Amy? Dia terima vaksin hari tu. Cakap boleh terbang. Dia terima vaksin. Ya, yeah, yes, yeah, so it's uh, Emilia. Uh, Emilia, okay, Emilia, yeah. you, you have a story to share. Come. I do, but it's not, it's nothing related to vaccine. Okay, I mean. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Shazwan was pulling your leg. <laughs> it was on me, not Shazwan. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, I mean, okay. I mean, pulling your leg. Okay, so um. Where, where are you? Hi. What's your name again? Emilia Cristina. Emilia. How come I don't detect you? Where are you? Emilia. Yeah, okay, Emilia. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so um, the story that I'm about to share is not related to me, but however, it is a story that I keep close to myself. And I also take, um, like, Pengajaran from this story. So, <laughs> this story is about uh, two mothers fighting over a child. Uh -huh. So each of the mother claimed that the child is theirs. So they brought the child to a court and they fought for custody over the child. So at the court, they were fighting and pulling and snatching the child from each other and while they were doing that, the child cried in pain. So one of the mothers, one of the two mothers, finally let the child go because she couldn't bear to see the child hurting. So the judge at the court, he gave the custody to the mother who let go of the child. So what I am trying to convey, the, the, the story is trying to convey right here is that if you truly love someone you wouldn't bear to see them in pain so it if it even if it means that you have to let them go so whatever is yours will be yours that's all huh. okay all right so if you believe that the right thing is to let go someone even if it hurts you do the right thing and let that person go. Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much for sharing. Good story. Short and sweet. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody. Please give a round of applause. The poll unto Emilia. We have another one. Do we have another one? Siapa nak cuba? Amir. Amir, Amir has a story. Amir Wahab. Huh. Yeah, he told in the WhatsApp group he has a story to tell. Ah, okay. A very interesting one. Yeah, okay, Amir. Everybody, please give a big round of applause to welcome Amir. Wow. wow. Amir, over to you. Okay. Lah. <laughs> Mm, I have a story. Uh, I'm not sure. That. I hope this is uh, going to be uh, a lesson for you guys. This uh, story happened to me when I was in diploma. And at that time, my phone, my laptop and my wallet got stolen when I, when I was sleeping. When I was sleeping. And in that morning, only the closest one only. Uh, in that morning, only my roommate know about that uh, about that issue, and my best friend is, uh, doesn't know about it because I don't want I want I don't want him to know because he's I have uh, another problem. If I tell him, it could be more complicated. So I handle it by myself and. At last, uh, at the end of the at, at the end of the day, my best my best friend know it's but for my roommate about my wallet and my laptop uh, got stolen, 
what I want to share is at the uh, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got no money. I got no phone. And just but I still living. So I wonder what's what what is I what have I done that God want to test me like this? Uh. Just what just that just what I want I wonder that this that week. And on the Friday, I got test again. I got test again. I, my roommate gave me uh, 10 ringgits. And that day, I want I need to uh, divide, allocate my money. If I use it to eat in the evening, at the night, maybe I can, I can eat and more because I don't have the money. So at the, uh, at the Solat Jumaat, Padu, uh, at the end after solat, after solat Jumaat, I just rem, I just remember that Allah is the greatest one. Allah is the is my God, and uh. He's never. Apa zalimi zalimi bahasa Inggeris apa? Eh? <laughs> zalimi. He will not be cruel. Ah, uh, he not be cruel to his creature. <laughs> His creation. Uh, his creation. His creation. His creation. Uh, so I believe that, and I, I am uh, perform a solat sunnah to rakaat, and then with the money that I have, only ten ringgit, but I use that, I use I take three ringgit to put it on the in the, uh, tabung masjid apa? Ah. Uh. In the charity box, donation box. Ah, charity box. In the charity box at the mosque. Hmm. And then I walk. Uh, then I go home. I go to my college bag. Ah. And on the way, on the way, I uh, on the way from mosque to college, I walk. And I walk through in front of restaurant. It's a uh, apa cakap eh? Lapa is, is very sad and is very hungry because I don't have money about, about uh. Uh, to buy the foods. So it, it needs to be, I need to be more patient and I just believe uh, to myself, I just believe to God. And before I reach to my college, to reach to my room, my best friend call, uh, tell me that uh, my brother has deposit 300 ringgit to his account for to me to to me to use that and the lesson that i want want to you want you want to you apa eh lesson that i want what the lesson that i want you to learn about this just believe uh god never grew their creation first and if you are have the money, have the wealth, please make us some sedekah to the charity board or anyone, because uh, God will divide, we double it, we double your money and we double your wealth. And that what I believe, and that what is uh that is what happened on that day. I spend, I donate three ringgit, and my but and my brother give me 300 ringgit on that day and i don't know how to speak and i don't know how to react because because it uh i think it's a uh, very shameful for me because i'm uh, a very a sinful guy but allah still give me a uh, big man so that is a very I don't know how to speak about that. I don't know how to grateful, but I still feel uh, shame about myself. That's what I want to learn. Uh, that's what I want you guys to learn. Oh, okay, bagus. Thank you very much for sharing, Amir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Amir. Incredible story from three ringgit to 300 ringgit, yeah? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's a lesson for everybody too, yeah? Just believe in God. 
So he had only three ringgit in his wallet, and he donated the three ringgit. Okay, ya, tengoklah eh. Ha, Tuhan balas balik macam mana. Okay, donate tiga ringgit bila kita ada tiga ribu ringgit tak sama kita donate tiga ringgit bila kita hanya ada tiga ringgit dalam wallet kita ya. Ah, uh, that that is incredible. I don't know whether uh, I myself will do it or not. If I only have three ringgit, I don't know whether I myself will donate three ringgit. If I only have three ringgit, yeah, but you did, yeah, because you believed hundred percent, yeah. Uh, okay, so so maybe God rewarded you because you have proven that you truly believe, and uh, you left everything to God, to Allah, to decide for you. Hmm, very good story. Okay, ah, cerita macam ni pun boleh juga kan? Ah, jadi ada pengajaran. Ah, jadi kalau kita kita semua kena percaya kepada Tuhan, we must believe in God's uh, power. Yeah, God will reward everything that we do. Believe. Believe in him. Cakap macam tu je. Tak terpujuk pun, tak terpengaruh pun. Kan? Tapi bila cerita macam tu ah Ya, yeah, uh, dulu masa I diploma dulu when I was in diploma, then yeah, one day I woke up and uh, my laptop and my wallet was stolen. I that's all I have. I don't have anything. Ah, uh, kan? Tuh, tuh, tuh. Ah, pahit sekali. So the lesson is, ladies and gentlemen, follow my example. I believed in God. I had only three ringgit in my wallet and I donated all the three ringgit that I have. I only have three ringgit in the world. And that is all I have. And I donated everything I had put into the charity box. And God has rewarded me. So believe yeah, in God's reward. Be like me when you are in trouble. The more in trouble you are, the more you should donate. Ah, Lagilah benda tu lagi terkesan. Dan uh, cerita tu membantu kita, meyakinkan kita Dan uh, insyaAllah kita pun akan mengikut contoh anda That's what we want, isn't it? Yeah, when we deliver a speech We want to persuade the audience to take the action that we want them to take Okay, bagus Anything you want to ask, Amir? Anything you want to ask, Amir? Is there anything that you want to ask, Amir? Hmm, <laughs> I don't know what to ask. No, 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 no. Bukan, bukan kau tanya. Ada tak sesiapa yang nak tanya? Is there anyone? Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Ah, okay, tanya lagi lagi. <laughs> do you, uh, I mean, do you still believe in the power of sedekah right now? Oh, still, still believe that because the more in trouble we are, uh, the more uh, it makin susah. The more we needed the uh, our assets, is be greater that if we donate it to other person because uh, reward behind the sedeka only got we can calculate it and only got we know it. It doesn't mean if we donate three ringgit today we got three hundred tomorrow. It doesn't mean like that. Maybe we donate. Three ringgit today, we got job tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know. We never know how God calculate our sedekah and reward it to us. Oh, I like that very powerful story, yeah. Sharing. Thank you very much. I mean, thank you for the lesson. Okay, tepuk semua. Okay, jadi. Itu saya kata nak nak bagi cerita rakyat boleh cerita sangkan cia boleh esok fable boleh. Cerita Beauty and the Beast boleh. <laughs> nak cerita apa lagi? Nak cerita Piramdi pun boleh. Nak cerita Musa Menjanggut pun boleh. Semuanya ada lesson. Nak cerita peribadi pun boleh. Okay? Uh, nak ambil cerita Upin Ipin The Avengers pun boleh juga. Kan? Uh, Sorang-sorang macam semut lawan... Apa nama tu yang dah cerita Avengers tu? Lupa dah. Thanos. Apa nama? Ha? Thanos. Thanos. Ah, Sorang-sorang lawan Thanos macam semut lawan Thanos Tapi kalau ramai-ramai lawan Thanos ah, kan? Ah, jadi kita perlulah untuk ada semangat setia kawan Dan kita kena buat kerja, bekerja sama Jadi bila kita bekerja sama 
lawan yang besar pun kita boleh jatuhkan. Ha, itu pun cerita juga kan. Apa saja cerita lah. Nak ambil cerita Doraemon pun boleh. Apa je. Ha, jadi, <laughs> jadi, jadi uh, pilih satu cerita and I want you to tell the story. I will break you into uh, your respective rooms, different rooms. Yeah? I will break you into different rooms. Okay. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Bye 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 everybody. I'll come and join your rooms to observe you, yeah? Okay. Have fun telling your story, sharing your stories. Uh, yes, uh, saya nak uh, tadi saya Encik Masih ada panggil saya untuk resume. So sekarang ni saya baru masuk. Ha uh, ada ah, meeting pasal ah, resume ah. Ah ha, ha. yes. Ya awak. Ha ah saya tak ada group. Kenapa resume awak? Oh ni sebab tak merge kan sekali. I uh, mean uh, IC saya semua saya tak merge kan sekali dalam satu PDF. Tu je saya ah, silap hantar. Ha ah, ah. let me macam mana nak hantar kau ni? <laughs> saya Daniel dengan Amir. 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 Uh -huh. Amir. <laughs> Tapi aku bila 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 dah buat group, uh -huh. oh, kau dah tak boleh masuk. Tak oh, boleh assign kan? Boleh boleh boleh. Boleh. Oh, boleh. Okay. Asyik sah. Nah, maaf. Okay 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 nanti akan uh, join you guys ya. Eh? Okay.
Yeah, for power to the right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, if, if the Muslim friends are like, okay, I will ask my parents today, but I have to plan a week. Like, yeah. Let's see how hard it is. Yeah, I mean, like that what happened to my sister. Like yeah. preparing for culture. You know, you want to go out next week, and this week you have to prepare everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the reason why is who will be behind that. Every time I tell this to my friend, they will say, oh, maybe because you're the youngest in the family. And I'm like, but I'm 22 now, you know, I should talk but, to you. Do, do you think like, it's something uh, like this thing happens? Uh, is it related to gender? So. Yeah, I have three brothers. Yeah. Mm. I have three brothers, and I'm the only girl. But it's still, I'm, I mean, like, that was happened to my sister. Like, yeah. preparing for culture, you know? You want to go out next week, and this week you have to prepare everything. Uh, yeah. The reason why is who will be behind that. Every time I tell this to my friend, they will say, Oh, maybe because you're the youngest in the family. And I'm like, But I'm 22 now, you know, I should work on this. Do, do you think like, it's something uh, like this thing happened? Uh, is it related to gender? So. Yeah, I have three brothers. Yeah. I have three brothers, and I'm the only girl. But still, I'm 22. I live in boarding school. I thought, you know, I, I, I know a little bit. Um, more than anyone, I think I should be. I should know what's right and what's wrong. So I don't think uh, they trust me enough on that. So yeah, back to the. So I was um, in the queue to buy a coffee, some coffee with my friends, and my friends started. Uh, talking, started gossiping about the cashier who was manning the, the store at the time. Lah. He was saying, my friend was saying, hey, the guy looks a bit um, feminine. Lah. But, you know, those, those kind of thoughts. Lah. Um, those kind of thoughts. And eventually we bought the coffee and everything. And after that, a senior came to us and said, hey, do you guys know that guy is actually Malaysian? And... Yeah, so apparently my friend has been talking in front of him, gossiping in front of him in Malay, uh, in front of the guy who actually understands Malay. Lah. And yeah, so the lesson is probably don't gossip, you know, in front of other people, even in language that you don't expect them to understand. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, very good. Very good sharing. Yeah. Don't talk bad about other people, assuming that they don't understand you, okay, yeah. because yeah. most probably they could, maybe they are like, like, for example, you gossip, you talk bad about that person in DM, yeah, thinking that that person couldn't understand DM, okay, and then later you discover that he, he is a Malay and he could understand, yeah, how embarrassing, isn't it, and he kept quiet. He kept quiet. Did, did, did he did he did he uh come to you guys and tell you this? No, no. A friend, a, a senior came after that. Lah. Because uh, after that, I think like after we paid, uh the senior eventually bought a coffee as well, and then he probably had some conversation with the guy. And, and that guy probably has com uh, uh would have complained and pointed in your direction, yeah. <laughs> no, right. It's not me, it's not me. I didn't say anything. It's my uh, friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, because, because you, you guys will be sitting together. So yes, we'll yes, yes, yeah. In your general direction. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Okay. So not yeah. a good idea. Lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, another one talking talking in BM in London. Yeah? Uh, so my experience talking in BM in London because uh, with when I was with my... The, the, the normal thing for Malaysians to do when we are in London, yeah, and I guess in, in New York and elsewhere too, when we are abroad. So we 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 would speak in BM, assuming that people around us couldn't understand us. So we avoided speaking in English, we spoke in BM. Okay, and then for all you know, the Chinese guy sitting there, oh, he's a Malaysian, he could understand. Oh, that Indian guy is a Malaysian as well. Yeah, they, they can understand what whatever that we were we have been talking about, yeah. Uh, so that's not good, yeah. So, so uh, keep your thoughts in private, and don't uh, think aloud in public. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sorry. 
Okey, yang lain. Okey, hantar pula. Siapa pula? Okey, Afiq ke? Syahida ke? Afiq, ah, while you were away, we, 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 I'm given uh, your friends a task to tell a story. It can be a personal story. It can uh, be a folk story. It can be a fable story. Hikayat story, whatever story. Okay? Begah holding story also can. But there must be a lesson at the end of it. Okay, I'll come and see you guys later. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. He asked me for help. He asked me for help. So macam macam kita macam duduk kat tengah-tengah kan. Lepas tu okay, lepas tu macam apalah kita macam uh, buat uh, I'm consider so I go uh, company for my sister to Sarawak but I always uh, say to myself that it's okay. Family first. Rezeki tu tak akan ke mana. If it's yours, it's yours. So macam Whatever did you do, uh, kalau bukan awak punya, awak tak akan dapat pun job tu. Kan? So macam, tak okay, takpelah. I pergilah ke Sarawak. I pergi. And then, after two weeks, macam diorang semua dah, dah sampai rumah. Semua-semua dah settle kan. For my, my, my sister semua dah settle apa semua. And then, uh, the next day, terus I dapat two offer letter from Mizuho Bank. So macam, ya Allah. Macam, wow. Macam, The niat tu lah, niat tu kena betul macam tu lah. So macam, okay, so this is what Allah show me. So, uh, I go for the interview, interview online interview, then I get the job. So macam, okay, I get two experience. So I have uh, done my vacation in Sarawak while I got a job offer. So that's uh, my experience lah macam tu. So my question to you, Atira. Yes. Did, you, did you report for duty at the Mizuho Mizuno Bank? Uh, <laughs> I was so dumb that time. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> because, because I got two job offer. One from Cossack, company secretary, and one Mizuho. Uh, the company secretary come first. So I I dah accept Cossack dulu before the Mizuho. So yeah. Uh, so, you did the morally right thing. You have already accepted. So whatever comes later, you reject. Yes, of course. Uh, so so that's why you 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 work at the company secretary. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Atira, okay. Yeah. If if it's not to privacy, mm -hmm. can I can I see you? Uh, what what meet did you quit? Or you are you still with the company? Oh. Dah, dah, apa tu? Dah berhenti sebab the the company was good. Uh, the environment was good. The staff all. Uh, but. But. The, what come back? But. But. Okay. <laughs> but the 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 pay. The salary. Yeah. Wages. Uh, the wages. I job for account assistant. So, it's tough to me. So, uh, PMB comes. Uh, so. Yeah, I just accept the PMB because of it tough to me to do a accounting a jobs. Uh, maybe maybe that the thing that you're not used to. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay too. It's not my background any, yeah. anyway. Rather than be stressful with what everything. What's your background? What's uh, your background? Business, business admin. Business admin. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Who's that? Is that your, uh, your sister? Your younger sister? No, it's anak saudara. Dia dah yang bergaduh tadi. Your niece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. How old is she? Uh, two years old. Two years old. Okay. Okay. Uh, continue guys. I will drop by again. Okay, very good Atira. Well done. I enjoyed your story. Thank you. 
Thank you. Tapatira, uh, thank you so much for sharing. The nice story telling. Yeah. Cut off.